In a chemical reaction, the reactants are what we start with and the products are what we finish with. But now we're going to look at reactions that go backwards too. They're called reversible reactions. Because they're reversible. Not all chemical reactions can be undone. When coal burns, we get steam and carbon dioxide. We can't very easily make these back into a lump of coal. But reversible reactions do go from the product back to the original reactants. For example, ammonium chloride can break down into ammonia and hydrogen chloride. But ammonia and hydrogen chloride can react to form ammonium chloride again. Obviously the coal thing would be a lot more useful. Reversible reactions are written with this symbol. This shows that there are two reactions going on at the same time. One arrow forwards and one backwards. The speed of two reactions will eventually balance out, and so a reversible reaction will reach a steady state where both reactions are happening. But the overall amounts of each chemical are not changing. This state has the exciting name of dynamic equilibrium. Reactions cause energy changes. They either produce energy or they absorb energy. For example, when acids neutralise alkalis, the liquids get hot. A reaction that produces energy like that is called exothermic. The energy is usually transferred as heat and we can measure this with a thermometer. The opposite of exothermic is endothermic. Add sodium carbonate to ethanoic acid and the beaker gets colder. The chemical reaction takes energy from its surroundings. Endothermic reactions might need a lot of energy to happen. It takes a lot of heat to break down calcium carbonate. This is a decomposition reaction that needs a blast furnace. Now we're talking! This reaction needs heat energy to be put in to make it work. It's endothermic. OK, so what about reversible reactions? What's going to happen with the energy? Exothermic or endothermic? You've got two reactions going on at the same time, over and over again, without stopping. If they're both exothermic, then you'd have a never-ending source of energy. Wonderful, but impossible. If they're both endothermic, then they'll eventually take all the energy out of their surroundings. The planet and everything on it is doomed. Not wonderful. But don't worry, this isn't possible either. If one of the reactions gives out heat, the other one takes it back in. That way, the energy stays balanced. So if one reaction is exothermic, and the reverse action is endothermic, the same amount of energy is transferred in each case, exothermic or endothermic. Ammonia is a very useful chemical. It's used to make fertilisers, dyes, household cleaners, nylon and explosives. It's also the main ingredient in making nitric acid. Not a household item, but very important in industry. Ammonia is made by something called the Haber process. The raw materials for the harbour process are nitrogen and hydrogen. How do you get those? Hydrogen comes from reacting natural gas with steam or from cracking the long hydrocarbon molecules in crude oil. What about nitrogen? Well, there's a lot of it about. Air is 80% nitrogen. Most of the rest is oxygen. Burning hydrogen in air uses up oxygen and makes water, H2O. Take that away and that leaves just the nitrogen. OK, so we've got the ingredients. Next job is to make the ammonia. You need to combine the nitrogen and the hydrogen. This reaction happens at different speeds depending on temperature and pressure. In the harbour process, the temperature is around 450 degrees Celsius and the pressure is around 200 atmospheres. There is also an iron catalyst to speed up the reaction. That ought to do it. Some of the nitrogen and hydrogen react to make ammonia. Here is the equation to see the arrows. It's reversible, so some of the ammonia breaks down back into hydrogen and nitrogen. How annoying. But not to worry, by choosing this temperature and pressure, we still get a good yield of ammonia. The mixture is cooled. The ammonia turns to liquid and can be removed. Good. That was the point, after all. The leftover nitrogen and hydrogen are put back in and the process starts all over again. So even though we don't get 100% of the product, it doesn't mean we can't make stuff from reversible reactions.